What is going on YouTube? This is Ask the Roots. So I'm going to review the debut album by the Spice Girls. Basically, this album is called Spice and it dropped in the fall of 1996. Its popularity helped it crest throughout 1997 and 1998. This is kind of a central album of the 90s. This is definitely something when you think, when you see like some of these VH1 90s kind of lists and that type of stuff, Spice Girls is definitely one. I mean, most of the time they'll just play like the song Wannabe, but I do feel like this album is pretty central. And this being like an album, it's one of those things when they have these lists called, you know, a thousand or 300 or 200 albums from the 90s that you must hear before you die or something like that. This is one of those albums, I would say, in term, at least in terms of the 90s package. This is one that you want to pick up. This is just very central, did a lot for it, was kind of a co uh, global phenomenon, just especially in like the team pop sense. You know, all the little girlies were doing that sort of stuff and liking the Spice Girls had the posters, just, you know, just merchandise, stuff like that, probably something of that sort. I just look after, I, I see the popularity behind this group, and I kind of feel like, despite the fact that it's been over 20 years since that kind of happened, I feel like a lot of this still has popularity and is not quite as much of a parody of just like 1997. I feel like some of this, when you hear a song like Wannabe or um, Say You'll Be There, you kind of think of this nostalgia going back to 1997 and 1998 and stuff. I see this album as a lot more of just like for nostalgic purposes, where this could probably pretty much still have some affinity in today where i mean it just kind of depends upon the singles that get played i mean if you're if your radio station local radio station is one that thinks taking it back to 97 is just playing wannabe and then you go like to the next song which could be anything you know it could be like mariah carey's touch my body or like like uh Nicki minaj's um you know super bass or something like that just going from wannabe to something like that you just look after the concept that i do feel like there's more to this album than wannabe and that's just kind of the concept as far as saying just out of the context of saying that this is definitely a 90s project and it just kind of makes folks reflect on times past and stuff but i think some of this I, I, I would like almost to kind of say a number of things for one thing to say that some of this stuff has like a pretty solitary good job of not being ancient and a dinosaur and then for the second thing to maybe for like local radio stations to play other tunes also i mean i know that the 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 number ones are always the ones that hit the most home but there is some other gems on here it is kind of that concept you just have to look after it i mean that's just the context of what i've seen in it there's some powerful songs in here and it is a staple of the 90s so i just would have to say um there were five singles off this project. I kind of like this project. It had, just to talk about it a little bit more, it was definitely a pretty dance heavy project. Definitely something that was different from like Euro pop of the early 90s. Definitely different from Euro pop of the early 90s. The stuff like Hathaway was doing and some of those type groups, the stuff like that. I would also have to say it kind of reminds me of like a little bit of like TLC little bit of salt and pepper in there just 90s girls groups that sort of stuff that was just popular around that time popular around that time maybe even queen latifah some of those folks those girl groups and girl rappers that kind of i like the hip-hop influence in here it's just nice to kind of get that homage towards it it's just interesting to kind of have that aspect because it kind of brings back some of that like pump it you know the salt and pepper song pump it some of that type energy of like 1991 and 1989 and stuff it kind of has that energy and more of like a 90 cents it kind of broadcasts it into like a super contemporary field and that sort of aspect so yeah the first single is wannabe this is probably the song you've heard the most definitely was a large song hit number one it's just kind of a parody almost when you think of like 1997 this is definitely if you like music this is a song that probably was one that a lot of folks heard and this has a pretty central and a big ubiquitous kind of tone in there has definitely had the aspect of this being like a real central this kind of 90s pop culture thing to know about this is definitely one if you like the 90s that you should know about it's just an overall good dance cut i mean reflecting on it and actually listening to it in a review aspect rather than rather than just hearing it on the radio it is kind of a vanilla dance club too and i just feel like it's just so basic i mean it's like a new almost that was going to hit number one or something because it's not really like a super crazy kind of vibe and like the verses it's more the chorus that's the most addictive part of this song but in the verses it's just kind of like a simple this kind of you know starry-eyed kind of dance tune and just like a vanilla sense very vintage just a shake your ass shake it kind of song 
but it just is kind of it's not really that crazy throughout the song as much i mean i like verse three on here that had some really you know carnivorous energy i like the way the girls kind of got uh rabbit and at the end of the song and then the the two the first two verses where it's kind of more piano-esque or just kind of this really feels vanilla but i do like the concept that like i said the hook is probably the most ubiquitous thing about this song it's the most recitable but i do like the rest of the song to kind of say that the energy of it when you listen to it more so than just the chorus has some appeal towards it so Say You'll Be There is the second single, and this is actually a pretty rock-solid song. I like this song quite a bit. This is probably one of the best, uh, this is definitely probably one of the best Spice Girls songs, in my opinion. I mean, this charted pretty high. It didn't hit number one, but it got pretty damn close. I just would have to say hit like number three, maybe number four. I think it hit number three. But this one's kind of a slower dance song, not quite as quick paced as like Wannabe. But it definitely has the energy, and this is a good example of having a follow-up single that just doesn't directly kind of change the tempo of, like, the energy of, like, the singles. This is an example where Wannabe was kind of like the rave one, the most crazy one, at least in the chorus, where Say You'll Be There kind of is like a more slinky dance cut where it's still kind of an up-tempo song, but it doesn't go from 100 degrees to like 30 degrees. I think that that's just kind of the concept of how that kind of went. So this is just a good follow-up. It's definitely a slower dance song, more mid-tempo, but it's very rosy and charismatic. I feel like this is just one that kind of has like a real kind of still this kind of starry-eyed and kind of boppish appeal towards it. But this one, this is kind of a little bit more, I would say, kind of more intimate, not quite as like this frivolous as like wannabe but just a little bit more romanticized in like that sense but i do like the concept of being able to say that it kept the energy and did not default to like the typical ballad s territory where it just tries to switch it up this is an example of a good one-two punch from spice girls and it just deserved the hit potential that it got i definitely think this is definitely one that's kind of overlooked in today's times just because I know that it's not 1997, 1998 anymore, but just to be able to say, to be able to hear this too, and this is kind of an overlooked one for most of the time. I mean, I could definitely see like two become one being played just because it just switches it up where if you're not looking for something quick and ravenous and kind of more frivolous, that's the one to kind of go to. But I feel like this is kind of one that this is like, hey, do you remember that the Spice Girls did this kind of tune? So this is one that I talk about that just has a lot of hit potential. So it's kind of more forgotten about. The third single is To Become One. This is not one that I recommend just because this one is kind of like one of the more intimate kind of getting ready to have some bedroom boom type songs. I know this is like a teen album, but considering that it seemed like the audience of Spice Girls at the time was probably folks between the, like the ages of 12 and 17, 18 or so. It was kind of the cut for getting ready to get laid and that type of stuff from a female standpoint where it's like, yeah, we're going to make this happen tonight, that sort of atmosphere. I mean, it's a good song for what it is, you know, when you think of those kind of coming of age type tunes and that type of stuff, I didn't really vibe as much with it. It's just a little bit kind of overly more saccharine than I would have liked. This is kind of real sweet and just, um, just kind of a little bit sweet and tangy. You know, I guess that's, I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know if it's tangy or tangy. It's just a real kind of tangy kind of song. I just would have to say it's a very sweet kind of song. I just look after it, but you know, I prefer like the up tempo kind of bops of like the first two singles. It's more of, that would be more of my preference in like the context of the Spice Girls, but they do have some of this to kind of switch the energy tempo. But this one is one that was definitely popular. This was another top five singles. So this one did pretty well. It's just kind of the context, you know, and the assortment of the audience, of, you know, it's just in the assortment of what happened, how they got this many hits like that. But the fourth single was kind of like a combination single. So the fourth single was Mama and the fifth single was Who Do You Think You Are? I didn't like the fourth pseudo single Mama just because that was kind of a more ballad. This one's just more about your mom and that type of stuff. It's kind of more in the context of like another ballad that's not quite as sweet as like To Become One, but definitely in that same vernacular where it just kind of has a more cheery kind of hop and bop kind of altitude about it, but it's just kind of in a ballad S department. So didn't overly enjoy that one i mean it's not one i recommend it's not a bad song it's just not one i recommend i i do like the fact that spice girls had the two up the, i do like the fact that the spice girls had the two jivey dance singles right away but i do feel like maybe they could have used another one but the the single who do you think you are at least tried to kind of get back some of their bouncy bop that they had of wannabe because i feel like the thing about wannabe is just the fact that's such a parody of a song it's just such a large song 
it just really reminds you of like the 90s so much and they needed to be able to follow that up this is a 10 song album they at least did it with say you'll be there but i feel like they needed like another earworm kind of quotable one where you just would be like if you want to be my lover and that kind of stuff but it just feels almost paradoxical just because it didn't have that but it's not to say this album is bad but this is it, i feel like this album is kind of over i feel like this album is kind of overshadowed by the popularity of wannabe but i do feel like the fifth single who do you think you are this is a good one this is a solid mid dance kind of bop definitely more reserved but pretty solid overall like this, yeah, it's uh, Who Do You Think You Are is a very mid-dance bop. I definitely feel like it has like some jivey kind of energy. This one's a little bit more up in your face than Say You'll Be There, but it just doesn't quite have as addictive of energy. It's not quite as addictive in the chorus. Like I think if this song ha had the energy, had the hook of Say You'll Be There, which Say You'll Be There had a pretty rock solid hook, definitely a great follow-up. But if who, if who do you think you are would have had the inner, the hook of Say You'll Be There, I think it probably would have been like the fifth hit. And this album might have went diamond or something if it had had that many hits. But for the most part, I give them about three out of five, 60% of the singles they managed to chart. And I do feel like even to become one as a hit, just in the sense of being able to actually have like a down tempo kind of song pressed as high as it did. It's just, you know, it resonates with women who, it resonates with folks who kind of don't mind the kind of less kinetic kind of energy and a more relaxed and reserved kind of altitude. But it's just kind of, you know, it just kind of it boils down to preference. I feel like the Spice Girls did it. But the biggest thing I see is in terms of the context of what they were lacking is just like a, I mean, they had like the one, two punch down, but, if, you know, getting to the fifth single, it becomes more apparent that if you don't have like the majority of hits when you have five singles it just kind of becomes kind of dicey and spotty and stuff and that's just kind of the concept where i do think you could say that they did have three hit singles but the energy of it how i probably would have done it is to have like three up tempo songs one kind of down tempo and then like a fifth song that just kind of has like like a message or something like that or just some other context maybe like a mid-tempo song or something like that but for what it is you know, just bitching back and forth about how the singles should turn out i mean this is a good album and the singles are pretty rock solid but it's just more in terms of my preference i connected with less than what there was but i do kind of feel like who do you think you are didn't quite have the addictive chorus of like the first two singles or the third single to become one but it is but it is a pretty solid album cut almost it just feels more like an album cut type song more so than a single but that's just kind of thing it didn't chart mama and who do you think you are didn't chart so that's kind of the thing so so there's 10 songs on this album and out of those 10 songs i recommend to you six so the six songs i recommend would be wannabe say you'll be there who do you think you are something kind of funny love thing and last time lover so to talk about some of these like I really feel like something kind of funny is very similar to Say You'll Be There. This is definitely kind of like an at-the-house jam, a very lazy dance cut. It's very reserved. I just kind of feel like it doesn't quite have the energy. Like, they kind of have some more reserved energy on here. Like, the energy of Wannabe is just not really conveyed that much beyond, like, another song like Last Time Lover. That's really the only one that has, like, the most kind of glossy and this kind of giggly kind of energy of wannabe it's about the only time that these girls do that as much in the context of the rest of the album and you know obviously i think the infectious the thing about wannabe that makes it such a hit song is this infectiousness but i feel like like um songs like something kind of funny and who do you think you are just kind of more reserved where they're kind of dance cuts but they just don't the energy just doesn't get over the top and it's not quite as like carnivorous as like it was. I feel like Last Time Lover is a more sultry one. This is one, definitely a smooth and kind of steamy late night track. This kind of more kind of just heavy dancing type stuff. It has a good energy about it. I do like kind of the concept of, and this really feels 90s-esque. I just would have to say amongst that, this really feels like something that TLC would do or something that Salt and Pepper would do just kind of within that. Kind of concept where most of these angles even despite the fact that the energy is kind of here and there and there and there type stuff i would have to say that a lot of these are dance related like a number of these like wannabe say you'll be there love thing last time lover who do you think you are something kind of funny and if you can't dance there's really only like three songs on this project that are not dance related i just three songs on here that are not dance related and i would have to say that like the energy is pretty much parallel i mean 
the energy is pretty much parallel to Wanna Be on Last Time Lovers, just kind of a more smooth kind of song. It's just not quite as carnivorous, but it does have the same kind of moods in terms of what the women are kind of thinking on there. In terms of the energy of the singles, I feel like there's not really a song that has like the kinetic energy of Wannabe, but at least in terms of like the mood of like the girls on here, I feel like Last Time Lover is the closest thing, but... And then Love Thing's kind of a different one. This one's kind of a low-key house party kind of cut on here, but it's also a pretty nice mid-tempo dance club cut, so it's just interesting to kind of get some of these where I feel like songs like Wannabe, Say You'll Be There, yeah, songs like Wannabe, Say You'll Be There and who do you think you are kind of more at the dance clubs and that type of stuff i feel like some of these album cuts like something kind of funny love thing and a little bit of last time lover kind of more house party kind of jams and it's just kind of it's interesting the way the spice girls kind of pick like the singles as the ones that you'd listen to at like a nightclub and like a dance club especially and then like the the album cuts are more for like kind of um house parties and just low-key kind of clubs and stuff. I mean, maybe back in 1998, you could have heard an abundance of these that weren't the singles and like low-key kind of clubs and some of that type of stuff or just random sporadic kind of moments. But I would say nowadays, it would probably just be the singles and that would be about it. But it's at least good to kind of see some of these in the reserve sense. I do feel like the three songs I recommended to you, which would be that are not album cuts, which are something kind of funny, love thing and last time love or just have particularly kinetic energy. And these are pretty good house party jams that you'd be surprised at the connections that it would probably make just seeing some of these when you think, oh, you like Spice Girls and then you play Wannabe. Well, there is more to Spice Girls than just Wannabe. And I definitely recommend, especially one that I would immediately recommend would be Say You'll Be There. You know, Decent Bedroom Boom number is to become one, even though I don't recommend that one. And then there's just a good stock of album cuts that just make this for some pretty kind of sultry and kind of decent, rousy kind of energy for like a house party in a lot of ways like you can treat it like it's 1993 all over again a lot of context so to talk about some of the songs i didn't enjoy like basically the four songs i didn't enjoy just boiled down to more of like the ballad s cuts i already talked about not liking to become one and mama but i kind of feel like if you can't dance i just didn't like the arrangements of that one i mean i i kind of was thinking when i first listened to it that this is going to be one that would be like another kind of low-key kind of dance jam but it just the arrangements behind it was trying to be really early 90s and it just didn't pitch that energy really well. It just didn't come off as really attractive of a song. And then another one that was kind of awkward was Naked, which was kind of like a ballad-esque one, but just the energy behind it was just not quite as attractive as what I probably would have thought it to be. So, you know, slashing four songs off a 10-song album really detracts from the score, but it's still got enough energy to say you get three nightclub songs with a lot of energy and three house party songs with some solid energy too so i would say me liking six songs out of um 10 i'm gonna give this album a 6.75 out of 10 i did like enough of this album to be able to say that it had some real energy on here despite the fact that you would think that it's just for teen pop and that type of stuff there is enough energy to kind of say that this is some pretty adult contemporary in a lot of ways it's just they kind of were seen as like teenage role models that's about the only thing towards it it's not like that it's just that they were seen as teenage role models and that was more the thing towards it it's not like that's a bad thing but you just look at the concept three dance club cuts three house party cuts you get some good energy on here so really 6.75 is nothing to sneeze at i feel like the social score i'll give a seven and a half just because they were trying on here to make some good jams and they pulled it off for the most part just the fact i don't know just for some reason it's difficult for r&b musicians to really pull off ballads a lot of the time just because they're always kind of hammy over the top and they don't actively portray the emotion i mean even when i reviewed like rick james and stuff and some of his kind of more slow jam kind of tunes they just didn't quite connect as well the energy just kind of shifts and just the context it is difficult to kind of have like up tempo energy with down tempo songs and just the attractiveness of how that works it just always has to be kind of more rousy and it doesn't always come off as like kinetic in a lot of ways that's just kind of the thing about it but um i mean for the most part this has more than it's more than half the album this has some real good kind of kinetic energy about it that this is attractive and infectious especially in songs like wannabe and say you'll be there just in terms of the social score as far as getting some of these jams just being able to say that a lot of this just has like good jiviness towards it and it's a good kind of thing to kind of reflect on and kind of reminisce on and reintroduce for folks who may not have known about this or haven't messed with it for 15 20 years or something 
But in terms of the future, like Spice Girls has been gone since uh, 2000. So it's obvious that they're just a product of the 90s and that type of stuff. But this is good to kind of dig up again to mess with some of this. I might mess with a few more of their projects, but this is, pro this is actually pretty above average.